And, and I'll tell you, over there in that corner, that man and the people around him didn't want this. They didn't, they didn't want to be going into a tenth round. And let, let, let's assume for a moment we're all we're full of it. Let's assume for a moment our punch profile There's numbers. A lot of people out there. That yeah, do. yeah, that's right. Let's assume I'm wrong in my scoring. Our numbers nobody likes, and it ends up being a bigger decision win for Nigel Ben. I got to tell you, based upon his performance, it still doesn't put him in the top echelon of middleweights. Not yet. You don't want to make that kind of declarative statement, but... And also, maybe that's an unfair statement, because after all, Aaron Barkley went on to win a title, virtually lost to Sander Lyon Williams, many believe, and Case was very, it was a very close fight, so maybe it's just that Sander Lyon Williams is a darn tough guy to fight. And Ben might be a little bit tight, too. He mentioned this yeah. only his third fight, and certainly the one Ready, which puts him under the microscope more than any of the others. Your card is dead even, so it does come down to this round. I gave the last round to Ben. But in the world of boxing, where it seems everything is painted in uh, black and white in terms of uh, you're either great or you're not so great. There doesn't seem to be a lot of gray areas in between. Then uh, if you judge it that way, they're not going to like what Nigel Ben did. But I tell you, he's wailing away with some bombs here in this 10th round. There's not a lot of mauve or mauve in <laughs> right. boxing, is it? a little bit better in this round and in the last. And Williams's technique on that left hook is, is not as good as it was early. He's tired. He's throwing that left hook more as an arm punch. He's not bending his body into it. Nigel Ben's making a strong case in these last two rounds for himself. You know, he's been a little critical because he hasn't been uh, the world beater he wanted to be against Sandalai Williams, but he's doing some good things in that ring. So clearly the least tired of the two. The Williams may not be doing enough here in this final round. Then walked into a left hand again. Williams trying to jump on top of him. Williams does not have an uppercut in his arsenal, really, and that hurt him in that in that sequence. Whether he had been hurt on the ropes or not, I don't know, but he had him there. Teddy, finish out! Move it, Williams! Down! Down! Five seconds remaining in this fight. Well, Sanderline Williams gave us the performance we would have expected from Sanderline Williams, and just a tad more. Nigel Ben did some nice things, but... Is he the second coming in the middleweight division? The fight ends with high action. Oh, Entertaining ten rounds of fighting, I'll say that. Well, the action got heated in the last round. They were both wailing away on the inside. Williams landing a good left hook and pushing Ben against the rope and not landing at all there in a round that uh, was close but I think might have been eked out by Ben. All right, let's uh, make it official here. We'll get the word from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring and we have a split decision. John Riley scores the belt, 96-94. He has it for Williams. Frank J. Carlo scores it, 97-93 for Ben. And Al DeVito scores it, 98 92 for the winner on a split decision from London, England, Nigel. Well, again, not a surprise that it's a split decision, but very much a surprise in how much the third uh, judge had scored the point. 98 92 is ludicrous, but I think that's obvious. Well, Nigel Ben, you got your win here tonight. I'm not sure if it was exactly the kind of win you wanted. It turned out to be a split decision. I was a little surprised at the margin. I thought you won by a point or two. Yeah. What did Sander Lyon Williams do tonight that was so difficult? He's done it to other contenders. He did it to you tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he, he's, he's very tricky. You know, you can't get a clean shot at him. And, um, and plus, he's, he's very slippery. You know, um, I just couldn't get a clean shot at him whatsoever. So I thought... Instead of trying, because I made a lot of mistakes in the fight. Did and he so, hurt you? Did he hurt you early in the fight? Well, he didn't hurt me. He caught me with some clean shots, you know, and, uh, and I wobbled, but, you know, 
once when I wobbled, I still I still kept myself together. Like, all right, let's look at the second round. You did a great job of keeping yourself together. Here he hit you with a short left hook against the ropes. You, you did a good job of containing and bobbing and weaving. Yeah, and you know I, I knew he was like he, he can punch a bit, but the thing about it, it was um, it was so tricky. It was so tricky. I, I underestimated him. Are you ready to step in and fight to, for a world title? What does this fight tell you in terms of that? Well, it tells me, you know, you, you've got to be, pe pe be prepared for people that are very slippery. I mean, people like Iron Barkley, Doug DeWitt, you know, they're made for me. They're you feel that because they're sluggers, you feel you have a better chance against them? Oh, yeah, much, much so. But this guy is very slippery.